Thank you for joining Evolutionary Energy Arts. What you are looking at is the thickness of the ice sheets at four different locations 21,000 years ago compared to the size of modern skylines. Can you imagine that? Look at the depth of the ice sheets. Can you imagine what that must have been like? As you can see, looking at it, you know, the ice sheet, you know, more than twice as tall as the tallest skyscraper in Chicago and Montreal, it's 10, 12 times as tall as the tallest buildings. So this was 21,000 years ago here on Earth in the last ice age. And the last ice age wasn't even the coldest ice age. There have been colder ones. Now, we are finding more and more scientists are saying we are heading into a maunder minimum or an ice age and you know a grand solar minimum and the world's going to change this is starting to become the accepted fact and it is going to happen it's part of what we are into right now as far as a different cycle now they're in disagreement as to how cold it's going to get. There are some that say we will see a typical mini ice age cooling of maybe one and a half or two degrees centigrade. Others five degrees centigrade. Others say it's going to be a full fledged ice age with even greater cooling on the planet. So they're, they're not in consensus. It's not like everybody is saying it's going to be this amount. There's big disagreement. And there's big disagreement in how long it's going to last. And if you could see right here, I mean, our world is going to change if this is the new reality with ice spread all across the north, snow year-round in the summer too, and the vast the vast majority of northern countries northern hemisphere countries so this is going to really change things especially in a planet that has you know seven and a half billion people heading towards eight billion whereas you know when the other ice ages happened we don't know in antiquity how many people were here but for sure in the last uh, ice age there wasn't the population we have now and, you know, one thing that's really interesting, this is Null School, which is a great resource. And it's showing the temperature and it's showing this is the most upper level winds on the planet. And you could tell the direction of the planet's turning by the belt going this way. And one of the things I've noticed is this huge vortex which we get you know we do get a polar vortex in the winter but this one just looks abnormally large and it's very interesting the way it's it's gone very strong too and so it gives us an idea about what's happening on the planet and these do change with the seasons if we look at like the South Pole now it's very tranquil because it's it's summer down down in there and this is such a great tool now if we go to like surface temps then you can see the surface temperatures and really truly in an ice age the best place to be is probably in Africa and perhaps that's why China is doing their one road project and there's so much interest with both the Chinese and the uh, United States in Africa at the moment because as we can see you know the the darker color like the darker red is more heat green or temperate temperate colors you know yellows are nice and warm blue is cold and then purple is absolutely frigid when you look at this 
so you could see you know Africa is going to be pretty much the warmest place now there's there's different things happening this time than a simple GSM or a monitor minimum because we also now are getting the scientists to admit that the poles are flipping. They are in the process of flipping. And we know that when the poles flip for a brief time, our magnetosphere drops to virtually nothing. And either way, as we go into this pole flip, we're going to have more and more radiation coming in. And that is probably a big part of their chemtrail spraying, is to try to decrease the radiation effects and bounce the energy back off out into space. Now, more cloud cover means greater cooling, and we're going to have volcanoes going off at a huge rate, exponential rate, and we're going to have a lot more cloud cover. So all these things are tied into each other. And as we know, those people that have lived in a northern climate and then moved to the south, you, your mood gets better because you tend to get a lot more sunshine and cloud cover decreases the vitamin D we're receiving and for a lot of people it could bring on depression and also that obviously will suppress your immune system and a lot of times we have these mass extinctions which come through because of um, food scarcity but also because of, of the fact that people's whole systems are getting weaker and so we, we are heading for a cloudier planet, a colder planet, and a planet with new poles. And the North and South Pole, as we have touched on before, they typically flip every 200 to 300,000 years. It, it's been 780,000 years since the last flip. It, there was an attempted flip 40,000 years ago that did not hold. So there is a lot going on with what we're what we're seeing and the thing is that people don't agree on how this is all going to transpose for instance if you're if you're following um, somebody like adapt 2030 uh, he's calling for a five percent decrease uh, in in temperature so roughly twice as bad as what we've had at the last Maunder minimum, a little bit more than twice as bad. Um, but it seems like he is thinking along the lines of maybe a 30 year event, somewhere in that range, you know, 20, 30 year event. And there's other scientists, you know, and there's um, a Russian scientist that he, he quotes often too, that thinks that we're heading into something that's gonna last hundreds of years. So the rest of our lives, for sure. The magnetic pole has been moving and it's been moving you know very very quickly and speeding up as we know and we we do know it was over Canada previously you know towards the Hudson Bay and has just been migrating towards Siberia and then some evidence is showing that it's moving towards the UK so even there, we're not in total agreement. And, and part of what happens as the poles move is just like the same thing that happens with the sun. The sun, at times, will have two north poles, two south poles. They split. And sometimes it's even possible for them to merge. And then all of a sudden, you know, the opposite pole will come out on the opposite side of the sphere. So uh, some think that that is happening with the North Pole heading up towards Indonesia and that the South Pole will end up popping up somewhere off the coast of South America in the Atlantic. And so the real guess is, you know, well, where's a safe place? You know, um, how should we plant our food, all that. I mean, really what we need to do as a society is to weatherproof our food. And that means, you know, massive greenhouses, perhaps even I've seen some scientists calling for floating ones that could be moved, you know, on 
the oceans themselves so we could move them to the most optimal place. Think of gigantic aircraft carrier size boats just housing nothing but greenhouses growing food hydroponically and there's there's so much money we need to be throwing towards these type of technologies instead of the military budget because we're going to end up having all sorts of issues with feeding people in a world that is so much colder even a world that's only one and a half to two degrees colder it makes a huge difference with food production huge so this article over here is saying when our magnetic field flips say goodbye to modern life and as we know looking at the record it appears that we've had high technological societies in many ways that have just advanced societies that have just wiped out and restarted and there's probably many reasons for this including pole reversals including ice ages floods all sorts of things you know that contribute to this and perhaps influences from other beings so it's all talking about this North Pole eventually switching places with the South Pole with apocalyptic results and they're not going to be in the same spot as we've said they're migrating and they're moving fast they could pop up anywhere and and truly I don't think there's the scientists that could really pinpoint exactly where they're going to end up because as you start researching it you start to see people have different and different very different opinions you know but they are now most of the scientists are starting to swing towards this and saying yeah uh, let's let's forget the global warming we have to plan for a colder world and colder is going to affect the food production more than the global warming so what do we do well you know we really need to get these topics up for discussion politically for one there has to be planning otherwise you're going to have what's going on in Venezuela and think about Puerto Rico too I mean Venezuela and Puerto Rico are two examples that we could look at and say oh what if this happens on a worldwide platform you know Venezuela where there's no food and, and it's just absolute chaos because of government mismanagement and because of the sanctions that have been put on it and then what happened when Puerto Rico lost all their power because can you imagine if we all lose all of our power now people have been moving into cities more and more all the time and the cities uh, people need to bind and get together with their neighbors to form plans and to help each other out because we know you know what happens when power outages come a lot of times you have all sorts of crazy looting and societal breakdowns you, you need to band together with your neighbors and you need to form plans and you need to provide for each other and support each other so there's huge changes coming and all the evidence shows that this comes on quick so it's not like you know we have decades and decades to plan because I have heard most of these experts and they're all kind of saying you know we're already in it you know and, and, and a couple of them are saying 2018 is the first real year of the beginning of the ice age others are saying 2021 will be it'll be very very cold and we'll probably have a year with no summer in most of the northern hemisphere you'll really notice it when if you're used to being 85 degrees in the summer occasionally touching 90 and it's staying in the 50s and 60s and maybe it jumps up to 70 and then you have snow overnight in the summer that's probably what you're looking at in many many areas so just you know locally you're going to have people with their own little gardens failing you're going to have local smaller farmers failing and then globally it's going to be a real push for food you're going to have tremendous price swings and you know these things are what invasions and wars 
come from in many cases the mongols invaded china during a mini ice age you know that was part of the push you know for them to go south and to head to pastures where they, you know there's food this one uh, mini ice age is here to stay and this is this is from june of 2017 and showed that in april temperatures both in the northern hemisphere and southern plunged dramatically last month and it is it does it does switch and the biggest switch is when it's going to be when the arctic current up there reverses and flushes out the cold water that is very it has a lot of fresh water mixed into it which is going to disrupt the gulf stream and then it's you know lights off then it's going to be really cold and it's going to be a completely different world at that point in time so it's really time to prepare and this article on financial post is saying we shouldn't be talking about carbon taxes we should be talking about carbon incentives to get people to make more carbon to warm up the planet because we need to warm it up not cool it down because we're heading into a little ice age however it's a natural cycle when more you always have global warming before it plunges into an ice age it's like getting a virus and your body has a fever in order to cool it so that is the same sort of thing that's happening right now the earth is going to cool itself but also it's the fact that the sun is in its cycle and it's where we are in the galaxy as we go through our orbit with our sun and in the greater procession of the equinox so there's many many factors going on factors going on and as we've talked about increased volcanism going on as we had that tsunami warning yesterday it makes me wonder about la palma and the canary islands and cuz if that did go then we would have a massive tsunami just like they were you know testing um, for the East Coast completely and also for UK and Spain and France and Africa it, w it would just be a, a horrible thing but understand that the planet's much more active there's gonna be a lot more volcanoes going and there's gonna be a lot more ash put in the air which is again gonna amplify the cooling so we don't know if the cooling is gonna be gradual or exponential but we do know that it does happen relatively fast. It's not like it's going to take us 20 or 30 years to get into this. It's, it's already in progress. And this article is talking about South Africa might be the epicenter of a geomagnetic magnetic pole reversal in progress. And uh, it's definitely happening. And this over here shows you magnetic field strength. And this area over here around Brazil is the South Atlantic anomaly and that's that's an area of very very low magnetism and so somewhere off of here one of the poles could end up somewhere off of in this in this circle you know this could be the the ending spot of the South Pole with the North Pole being more like over in Indonesia and Southeast Asia so we could end up with a globe that you would not even recognize you know basically flipped and we know from the way that they built the grand the great pyramid that at some point we're supposed to be pointing the the shaft on the great pyramid one of the shafts is going to point directly towards vega where now it's pointing towards polaris marking the north pole and it's a 50 degree difference between the two so you know perhaps we're in for a 50 degree shift we we really don't know this is all conjecture and and there's not even there's really no scientists that know exactly what's going to happen and this is talking about the lava lamp effect you remember those lava lamps those of you that were around in the 80s and 90s and they were so popular back then may explain chaotic flip-flops in the earth's magnetic field so it's all about the internal flow of the iron core of the earth responding to all this increased energy coming in because the shields are down so we, we really don't know exactly what's going on with that either and you know what is the final outcome 
I think the best thing for us to do, you know, is is truly be aware and awake uh, to demand change in a political way. You know, we need to change what's going on with the earth. It's time to, you know, stop spending such a huge amount of money on the military and being afraid of each other. It's time for us to to bind together as one big family. Because we are facing something very big. We have two big things coming. We have a magnetic pole reversal. And the scientists are in disagreement on, on that. There's many mainstream scientists that don't want to panic you and want to say, well, it's just magnetic, you know. And eh, maybe it'll screw up with our GPS. That's about it. There's other scientists saying, uh, no, it's going to fry everything. You're not going to have any electronics. But, you know, they're not going to come out and say, well, it's going to cause an actual pole reversal. You know, where the earth itself is going to shift or the crust is going to crustal displacement is going to happen and then there's those scientists that say the entire surface of the earth the crust could shift in which case then you have you know just unbelievable earth changes you know tsunamis and you know everything will be completely different and there's very, very big differences there between them. And we really don't know. So what can you do? Again, we could demand change on the local level, getting ready, spending money on things that are going to save people's lives, provide food, provide shelter, provide comfort, and stop spending so much money on the stupid militaries, which have been used to just keep us apart. We need to band together as people. We need to help each other. We need to work together instead of do what happened in the past. When, and what's happened in the past in times like this, you have wars. You have, you have political countries you know, going and invading others for their resources. It would be much better if we could all cooperate together. You now, China has built all these ghost cities. You know, These cities that are in the deserts and in spots that are not really even inhabited and yet they're building them for hundreds of thousands of people to inhabit why are they doing that well because they know what's coming they know what's happening and i always wonder you know why is it that china and russia seem to do some things for their people and where it seems like our elites just care about themselves here in the united states uh, they're not doing any projects for you know, keeping the public safe, but yet they have their underground bunkers. We know that, and you know they're they're adding to them. Whereas Russia has added so much, you know, as far as underground bunkers, and of course it would take a lot to keep us safe. But the best thing for us to do is to band together and to prepare and to keep informed and to think about, you know, how can I make make it so things are going to grow. Even if it was quite a bit colder, you know, even if we were, you know, if, if I'm here in Florida and almost all the time in the summer, it's 90 degrees and then 70 overnight. And now, OK, what if it ends up being, you know, 40 and 50 overnight in the summer and we're only getting up to touch 70 or 60s? You know, the, the plants that are growing here are going to be different than what's here right now. You're going to have a lot of plants that aren't going to survive. So then what should I grow? You know, there's a lot of people that are getting seed banks, making sure they have tons of seeds and they're getting compost and things like that. And thinking long term, yeah, thinking long term is great. The other thing we should do is prepare ourselves in a spiritual sense. And where's our heart and where's our personal vibrational level? Because as I've touched on on other videos, the Schumann resonance is changing in the earth. The earth is changing. The vibration of the earth is changing and what we know is that the earth is actually rising in vibration so the earth is evolving the ancients thought that each planet each star was a being was a god and they might not have been wrong because humans if you look at a human on a different level we look like stars energetically when we shed the physical body we are nothing but energy and consciousness and we do look like a star 
And so the sun itself is a being on another level. It's a being on a different dimension. And so the ancients weren't really wrong. They were right. <coughs> the earth itself is alive. It's a living being. And so is every planet. And so are you know, all, our sun and all the stars that are out there. These are all entities. These are all beings with consciousness. They have consciousness. So the earth is evolving in its consciousness. It's rising up in vibration. Those of us that are in tune with it will rise up in vibration as well and will shed the things that lower our vibrations and rise up with the earth. So in a different dimensional reality, the earth is not really going to head into an ice age. It's going to head into a golden age. It's not going to head into cataclysm and destruction. Perhaps on the 3D it is. But on the higher levels, like in the fifth dimension and, and these higher levels, it's going to head into becoming heaven on earth, as has been spoken about in many, many traditions and been hinted to. And this is really our greatest hope, is changing our personal vibratory rate. Because, I mean, I am... <coughs> I am personally a believer in reincarnation and that we've done this all before <coughs> and that there is a soul journey. Um, almost every tradition believes in reincarnation and even if you're a Christian there's there's so many references to it in the Bible. So many. You know, Jesus and John were taken for Elijah and you know, there's there's just reference and reference and reference and in the uh, hidden traditions Enoch ascended. You know, Enoch walked with God and then he was no more. In in the hidden traditions Enoch and Ezekiel ascend and become basically like angels. You know, you've heard of Metatron and Sandalphon, perhaps. But in the Kabbalah, the hidden mysteries. Now, these things were taught to initiates. We are going to change. And it even says it in, in, uh, in the Bible. And the Apostle Paul talks about it. He says, Lo, I will tell you a secret. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. You know, in a twinkling of an eye. And the Tibetans, you know, with their meditations on achieving a rainbow body. And all of a sudden, after, you know, meditating for prolonged periods of time and getting to a certain level, go to visit the monk who's in meditation, and there's his rope. He's gone. His, his whole body has just disappeared. Where did he go? It's possible because ultimately we are consciousness itself itself and that's what we are we're consciousness we're energy energy can't be created or destroyed it can only be transformed from one state to another we have many bodies of which the physical body is just the densest lowest level body there's the etheric emotional mental celestial there's all these different bodies that are all a part of us and then we have are our own star and so it's really nothing to fear everything that's going on because this is all part of our learning experience and why we came here in the first place. We came here to change things for the better. That's why we're here. And if you're listening to this, you're somebody that, that knows this on the inside, that knows you came here for a purpose. And you came here to help in this transition, to lift people up, to help each other. To release people from the ignorance that we've been in. The amnesia that we've suffered. So this is all really an opportunity to shine your light. And to do what you came here to do. You know, to help others. To band together. To get the human race thinking as one again. Instead of thinking as a tribal society pitted against each other. And this does not mean that we have to give away our customs. It doesn't mean that if you live in you know, France, you have to change your ways and all of a sudden do what the Americans are doing. Or that if you live in China, you have to change your ways and do what the Russians are doing. 
and if, or if you're in Greece, you have to change your traditions and and you know take on the traditions of you know uh, the Dogen, for instance, in Africa. No, I mean those are all beautiful cu cultural distinctions, and having a united humanity wouldn't get rid of that. It would accentuate it because we would enjoy each other's differences in peace without the fear of invasion without the fear of war because those fears are put on us by these governments that love their power and they want to maintain their power it's all about power for them that's what that's what fuels this is the lust and love of power and that's not why we're here we're here to share the bigger truth which is we're one united humanity and we need to rise up and shed the chains that have been binding us downwards into division and fear fear is an energy that won't allow you to hold love we must shed our fear of each other before we could hold love and before we could really truly help each other so we need to get out of that we need to get out of that mindset you know our change is coming oh yeah for sure we are right in the middle of it and it's going to speed up is it something to fear it's it's something to view as if you can view it as an opportunity to show the best of you and the best of your neighbors and as an opportunity to change the world because the system that we've had is broken and needs to be completely changed we need to work together and we need to work together fast and we need to demand change and if the governments won't do it then those governments need to go we need to vote them out and get people in that actually care about people and not care about money and lining their pockets as always please like and support the video and the channel share make more people awake subscribe if you haven't subscribed we got to wake people up to what's going on because the time is getting late and we need more action we need to wake people up to this we need to start preparing for things right now we need to work as a global society and drop our fears and become a united humanity that's going to survive anything that comes whether it's ice age or pole shift or whatever we're going to survive and come out of it stronger so that's the message we need to share and we do it without fear and we do it as a united tribe one tribe together thank you so much for joining me at evolutionary energy arts i look forward to your comments and i will see you all again take care my friends